welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. Um, the good news is I've just received the uh, prototype brackets back from CloudRay today. They look perfectly okay. I mean, they're made to my drawings. I think probably the sensible thing to do to give you guys confidence is to whip this one off and put this one on. First thing I'm going to do is take the belt off. And we need to keep that little bracket. We'll remove the cable chain bracket. Tie wrap on there. That will give me access to the other end of the, uh, the belt. Just loosen off the lock nuts. So that's the belt loose. We'd better just remove that completely. So we take the head off. Now I've got to remove my little clamp handle and the nozzle. Then we've got to remove this nut. And then we've got to undo the four screws underneath here. Now you'll need the four screws that you take out because they are not supplied with the bracket. Make sure it's the right way around, obviously. Actually, it can't go the wrong way around because that screw will get in the way. Now, while I've got it all off, I will just quickly wind this back on. Now, there's a mark on here where I tighten, where I know that this handle fits. That's all back together. We'll now remove this one and the bracket comes off and we put the new bracket on just leave those just a little bit loose just so that we can slide the head backwards and forwards uh, while we've got plenty of space here I think we'll put the <coughs> we'll put the clamp bracket back on we don't need these screws that they supplied. We've got the screws already in the belt. So we'll just tighten these up just a little bit, put the two or three threads in there, just till the thread comes through the bracket. And then we'll sort the belt out. They supplied us with new screws to go through the clamp bracket. So we can just put those screws we can just clamp those screws in there with one or two threads. <clears throat> then you can lift the clamp bar up and put your belt underneath. The belt should fit underneath there. You don't want the belt too tight, just let it flop down a little bit like that. And all we need to do now is to adjust the belt up on these two. Now what you do is turn these about three or four turns each, keep them going in roughly level with each other. So we've got the thread protrusion roughly the same and that seems it, it's a bit arbitrary but that feels pretty good. It doesn't feel too tight, doesn't feel too loose, it's just nice and snug. And then all we've now got to do is do up the lock nuts <clears throat> and that will lock the tension. Now we can attach the cable chain bracket. Again, they've already supplied you with screws and washers to do that with. Now we need to slip this between the belt and clamp that into place. Get things roughly set up. So we put that to about the middle of its stroke. I don't know where it's got to go and we'll just tighten two diagonal screws up. So we'll put that into the middle of the slots and again we'll just snug up a couple of them. So we'll just push this across to the end here to make sure it clears the zero sensor. Nothing hits. 
that's fine. Now, with a bit of luck, I should just be able to turn on the machine and it should zero itself. So is it X has zeroed? And Y has zeroed? And that's my table Z zeroing and it's the, it's the vibration of the table that you can hear as it creeps down. So we're just getting on one of my little targets and we'll just stick that in that hole there just to see roughly where we are. So I'll turn my power max power down to 15%. Okay, now I'll do a quick pulse. Oh well, that's not too bad, is it, for the middle? Now I could spend a lot of time trying to get that in the middle. It's pretty good that way just for the sheer hell of it I will adjust it up because I've got to go up just a shade to put that into the middle there we go so just temporarily I'll lock that back up and that's all the time I'm going to spend doing that now I've got to drop my table and I've got to take all this off again. Because to do my Z, so there we go, I'm going to save myself some time earlier on by leaving that off. So to set my Z, any piece of card will do, but we'll use one of these. We raise the table up as high as we can. So that's my zero. So we'll try and do a pulse on there. There we go. Now I'll drop my table down by at least 100 mil. And now we'll do another pulse. And it's not in line as you can see. So what I've got to do, I've got to bring the beam back so let's try again. Not bad. A little bit more. Pretty good. And then I've got to go across very slightly to the back of the machine. I'll wind that one out just a shade. Too much. Right, so now I've got it nearly there. I'll do the same thing again. Now we'll repeat it a second time. Not bad, just a little teeny weeny bit backwards. Pulse. And I think that's pretty close. And what we've now done, we've aligned the Z axis, we've aligned the beam up with the travel of the table. Basically, we've aligned it with the lead screws that are there. So we've now got a Z axis which is absolutely perpendicular to the table. What we've now got to do is to make sure that the beam is in the center of this diameter here so that it passes right through the center of the, the central axis of the lens. Now to do that I've got a little bit of setting kit that I've designed here which enables me to put a little target in the bottom there and now we can see how well the beam is centered. Pretty good actually it's not far out. It's, it's virtually correct that way and it's slightly out this way. Well this way is dead easy so let's do that one to start with. We need the beam to go towards the back which means that we've got to pull the target forward. So we just loosen the screws off the, the screws on the head. That looks pretty good so we'll just lock it up there for a minute because we're not going to adjust them again. Check one last time. Yep, spot on centre. Now, as it happens, I haven't got to do anything with the Z because it's already on centre this way. But if it wasn't on centre, if it was backwards and forwards, then I've got to use the up and down adjustment to get it to spot on true centre. So we should now be able to lock these up and hope that when I tighten it up, I don't change anything. 
check the pulse again. So now we know that not only have we got the Z axis completely perpendicular, we've also got the beam running true right down the central axis of the lens tube. Just check where this is because I've got to find out where it tightens up. The clamps, which is just about there. And you can see the mark on there where my handle has got to go. So if I drop that through 90 degrees and put my handle back on, put the lens tube in, connect up my air pipe. We will just tie this up. It's got to make sure that at all times that this sits clear of this sensor. looks pretty clear. Then we've really only got one more final test to do. Piece of masking tape on there and a quick pulse check. Dead centre. Can't ask for any better than that. So there we are about 15 or 20 minutes and we've fitted the new head. So I shall send the all clear signal to China and they will go ahead and start manufacturing these now. So thanks for your time and I'll catch up with you in the next session.